Okay, this video is going to review metamorphic rocks. We have been talking about all uh, rocks and minerals this chapter. We've covered igneous and sedimentary, and now finally our last type, the metamorphic rocks. Uh, your notes should include these things when you uh, are writing your notes for this particular section of our chapter. Okay, the first and foremost fact you need to know about metamorphic rocks, they are formed in a process that involves heat and pressure. Uh, the heat may vary and the amount of pressure may vary, but the, one of those two things will be there. And what happens is it changes an existing rock type in a way that it's no longer that type of rock. So it'll add enough heat to it where the uh, minerals realign with themselves, becoming a different type of rock, or the pressure is so intense that it crushes those minerals in a different way and they get reclassified. So metamorphism the changing of something, right, in, do, in terms of rocks, requires heat and pressure. And you see the big uh, asterisk there, right? No melting. The rock could not have melted, because if it melted, you know it will have become igneous. So here's a uh, standard kind of drawing where you have an area of intense heating, an area of cool area, and in between you'll have the weight of the rocks from above, the heat from the rocks below, the molten magma below, and you get an area of metamorphism shown in this kind of purple, darker uh, shading. Now that pressure could also be formed when you have two huge areas of the Earth's surface that are forcing themselves into each other. So here we have a collision of two giant areas of land and this results in a metamorphism of the rocks that are kind of stuck between them. Now, metamorphic rocks form into two, in two distinct ways. There are rocks that form, like we just talked about, those are known as the regional metamorphic rocks. They form when huge continental collisions occur over huge areas of land. There's a second type, known as contact metamorphism. And that occurs when lava, uh, the heat of the lava itself, distorts the rocks that it's touching, that it's near. So that might happen in, um, in a volcano. I'll show you a picture of that in a second. So here's some examples. If you're dealing with regional metamorphic rocks, you're dealing with things that rocks that will look and have these features. The first of which we're going to worry about is called banding. That's the most extreme. So banding is what we see here in this rock, where we have a dark area and we have a light area. And it's almost like stripes. Light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, across the whole rock. That is a clear indication of banding. A slightly less dramatic change is foliation. And it has this look of being incredibly shiny and flaky. So we talk about these rocks kind of flaking off, where the minerals have aligned and weakened, where pieces of them will just fall off. So this is the mica crystals aligning themselves in the same direction and becoming relatively weak. Now why does that alignment happen? Because igneous rocks have an alignment that looks like this, random. You add stress, which is the geologic word for pressure, and those, those same minerals that were all random now line themselves up. And the darker minerals line up together, lighter minerals, dark, light, and you get that banding effect. Now, contact metamorphism doesn't have as clear of a pattern defined. So here's a rock before metamorphism, and here's a rock after contact metamorphism. Almost impossible to see. Right? But you have to know the rules. It had direct contact with lava, does not show foliation or banding, and absolutely did not melt. So here's lava pouring out of a volcano somewhere. Underneath it, it's incredibly hot. That heat is causing contact metamorphism. And here's your chart. Very simple chart compared to the igneous one very similar to the sedimentary one. So be careful. Be sure you're reading the title, that you're on the right chart. Uh, four rock names listed here. Those are the ones that show 
some sort of foliation, some sort of alignment of the minerals. The most extreme being nice. That has a, the, the feature as banding that we talked about. And there's four rocks at the bottom that are called, that are labeled as non-foliated. They do not have alignment of the minerals. They've still been metamorphosized, but the, the minerals have not started to rearrange. So something like hornfells form from contact metamorphism. Quartzite marble, meta conglomerate can form either regionally or contact, right? And they give you pretty specific rocks that they metamorphosize from. So quartzite comes from sandstone, which is mostly quartz. Marble comes from limestone. So that is a very common set of, of, of facts that you may be questioned on. What type of rock was quartzite before it metamorphosized? That kind of thing. So here's another example, contact metamorphism. Right? You see sandstone down here at the bottom, sedimentary. Rhyolite here at the top, which is a igneous rock, which means it was lava. And guess what we find before it? This, in between it, the sandstone has now metamorphosized into quartzite. Right? So this rock would be the metamorphic one and between a sedimentary and igneous layer. And here's another example showing the kind of uh, grades of metamorphism, we'll call it, where this we have sedimentary, low grade, higher grades, and the highest amount of metamorphism you can have, which is the nice. Okay. Just another diagram, getting used to how they will show this stuff to you, where you go from a straight sedimentary pattern to a distorted featured pattern, where things are, are twisted and bent right, as, the, as the mountains formed. This would be metamorphic. So overall, metamorphic is created by heat and pressure. You're going to look for banding, which looks like stripes, or foliation, which looks like flakes. Regional metamorphism of a huge area. Contact metamorphism is contact with lava. So that's the quick review of metamorphism. There are, of course, more facts you will find in your book and in your notes. So uh, read up and study, and good luck.